Hello, my name is Carlos Negrete from Mexico. I'm a freediving instructor and underwater photographer. Today, I'll share with you some basic information and tips about freediving underwater photography. So let's dive in. Before jumping in the water, make sure you're comfortable with your skills, that you have a safety body, so you can focus only on your footage and forget about the rest and enjoy the session. First, we need to understand how water affects light. We have different effects. Refraction will make objects appear much closer and bigger, around 25%. We also have diffusion, which there are particles of organic material or plankton that are always going to be in the way between your subject and you. So don't shoot too far from your object because there's going to be more diffusion in there. Loss of color at depth. Whenever light enters the water, the colors are going to be absorbed in a particular order. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. The deeper we go, the colors are going to be taken. So also don't forget, if you get super far from your object, colors are going to be lost as well. The only way to bring the colors back is going to be with artificial lights or strobes. Second, we need to understand and control our camera settings. You need to get familiar with your camera, understand how aperture works, ISO, shutter speed, and get familiar with it. If you cannot control it on land, forget about it underwater. There are different types of cameras, like action cameras, point and shoots, DSLRs, mirrorless. They vary in price and weight. I recommend you start diving with an action camera, get familiar with it, get familiar with underwater photography a little bit. And as your skills, not only with the photos, but also your diving skills improve, you can upgrade your camera and make the most of it. We need to pick the right lens. So depending on what kind of photo and which subjects we're gonna shoot, we're gonna pick the appropriate lens. For example, if you're interested in shooting uh, close-ups of small animals like nudibranch or small fish in the, in the coral, then you want to pick a macro, a macro lens. And in other case scenario, you want to shoot bigger animals for free divers, uh, you want to use a wide angle lens that is going to allow you to fit them in the frame and let more light inside. Talking about camera housings, there are different materials, manufacturers and brands. They vary, for example, acrylic, polycarbonate, or aluminum. Basically what a housing do is keep your camera, you can keep your camera inside, vacuum sealed, and you should be able to operate all your camera settings without a problem. Before going in the water, make sure your O-rings are completely clean and lubed with the manufacturer's lubricant. Also, check for dust, sand or any particles that can be inside the o-ring because this can cause you a flood and then losing all your equipment. Whenever you finish your session, make sure you put your housing in a rinsing tank with your dome cover so you avoid scratches and in fresh water. You want to leave it rinsing in fresh water and you want to press all the buttons to make sure the salt and the minerals come out and avoid getting your buttons stuck. Using software like Photoshop, Lightroom, or Premiere Pro is gonna help you to edit and work on your footage after your session. Um, the more practice and the more hours you put in these uh, softwares, the more tools you're gonna be able to master and the better your footage is gonna become. So spend a lot of time doing this. A little pro tip, always shoot in RAW and this is gonna help you to get more information in your shots and make the most of it when you edit. I'm gonna share with you some general tips to achieve great content. Always do a test shot before going in the water. This is gonna help you to know that you have enough battery, enough memory card space, and maybe sometimes we even put the lid on the lens. So it's nice to know before going in the water. Your freediving fins, especially carbon, 
are gonna help you to stabilize your videos. These are gonna make super smooth movements and keep you control of your camera when you're diving. The closer you get to your subjects, the more color, sharpness, and contrast you will have. Whenever you review a shot of a photo that you just take, um, instead of watching only the display, use your histogram, which is a scientific explanation on how, how light was absorbed in that photo. Use that as a reference instead, you, instead of your display, because then can get you might seem that it's okay, but maybe it's overexposed or underexposed and you're not sure until you get home and open it in the computer. So using your histogram is better. When you're approaching wildlife or your subject or your freediving model, make sure you approach slowly and from your level. This is gonna make a much better shot and also make animals more comfortable. Since we're freediving, we're not producing bubbles, we're not making noise. So let's take advantage of that. Composition is key. So play around with it, follow rules and also break the rules. Get inspiration for your, from your favorite photographers and work on your own style. It's all about enjoying. This is it for today. I hope you enjoyed the tips and the information. And remember, the more you practice going to water and shoot, the better you're gonna get. So until next time, Thank you.